So I'll just grab a video. Actually, it doesn't even matter. I'll, I'll even grab, I'll make a comp. This is going to be a grocery store setting. So I'm going to drop that in. And then we're going to scale this down. So frame guides, what you got to do is you got to go into do it, Angela. So if you don't have it already open, you just go here and then you're going to scroll down. And then here you should see do it, Angela. So I already have it checked, but if you don't see it, you got to check it there. Then you're going to go here where it says camera. Now we're going to be living in this setting for a bit. So I'm going to have this like broken up into different sections. The thing with frame guides is when you click on it, it's going to build a frame guide here. And so this frame guide is basically just shape layers. Now, the cool thing with the frame guide is if you need a nice little letterbox effect to make your film look pretty cinematic or even your animation, this is exactly how you do it. Now, you might be wondering, you're like, well, now these this frame guide is here. Plus, if I render it and it has this guide, this uh, tic-tac-toe icon, it's not going to render. So what you would do is you just hide the, the grid, just hide all three grids. You can still keep this letterbox, and then you just have to right-click and turn it into a, something that's going to render out. So now it'll render out. But we, we usually you wouldn't want to do that because you just want to use it as a guide. So I want to change that back. And then if you look here, I'm just going to tone the color down. I'm just going to darken it just a little bit. So you can kind of see how you have like the action guide there. Now, um, there is something here. Like you can see there's a, you have this grid. It's called safe frame grid. But you have different grids that you can use. You even have the uh, the golden uh, Fibonacci there, which is freaking awesome. But you even have that, so that's really good for framing stuff. And then you have the golden rectangle. I don't use that. I I would use the golden uh, Fibonacci. I'm probably not saying that right. You even have the real Fibonacci. You have the thirds. I use that a lot. Uh, rule of thirds. If you guys are familiar with that, you have a slant thirds. You have uh, center, so you have it's basically the crosshairs there. You have digital frames, uh, which is safe. This is digital frames is a lot less grids. I would say in animation, I use thirds the most, but you'll notice something off about thirds. So if I if I hide these, it looks cluttered. So what I would do, this is what I would recommend. I would keep these two off and just use thirds like that. Because you have multiple grids. See, that's a, like a whole different, that's another grid. That's another grid too. But you can have, like I would work with it like this, but I would want to turn off this top grid. Let's turn this one off too. And then we'll go into this. So now what we have is just this box. Let's see what's inside. Let's open this up a bit. So we got that. So that's the frame. Ah, there it is. So if we turn off the frame, now turn the grid back on. Yeah, there we go. So if you don't want the frame on, you can still have the grid here and then just kind of scale it up if you want. But I, I wouldn't even bother scaling this up. See, the thing is, is that if you turn this off, let's turn the whole thing off. So what I normally would do before I knew about uh, do with Angela, I would do Alt and then the quotation marks and it'll make this grid. Now, normally it would be a lower third grid, but this is not lower third grid, as you can see. So I would have to go to preferences and then I'll have to go into grids, which is right here. So I would go into this option and I'm going to change it right now. So if you haven't done this, you I would highly recommend you do this. And then I basically simply will change this to three horizontal and then three vertical and then hit OK. And then I would just click Alt and then the colons and then you have your lower thirds. It's the same, it's literally the same process. And if you click on this again, you'll see, turn this down, but you can see this is the way it looked. In my opinion, I think the way I have the lower thirds through the software is better than the way they have it for um, Angela. But I think they did it for this way for Angela because it's a cinematic thirds. It's not a normal lower thirds. Now, you might be wondering, like, how do I get it to be more like the green line? So what you could do, you could try scaling it up. As you can see, that doesn't really help much. You could do this. 
and now you got what you want. So that's what I would do. I would do it more like that. So now if I turn this off, you have your lower thirds. And then you could even save it if you want. I'm going to save this. You can save it as a preset. I'm only going to have that highlighted. I could save it as a third. And now if I want to use this again, I'm not going to double it, but if I hit Control spacebar with video copilot typed in third. Whoops, it should be there. Oh, yeah, that's right. It won't be there until I reset the software. Like once I close out and come back in, it will be there. And then if you want to save the Fibonacci, just the same process, you'll just go here, save animation preset. And you can see third is there. So it will save this stuff but you would just do it differently, a bit differently. Let's do golden Fibonacci. And now you'll always have this if you need it. So that's how you do the frames. Like I said, you can change these, you can save them.